Okay, so right now you want to get ahead in life. You want to be able to attract women. You want to be able to make lots of money, create financial freedom, travel the world. And the list goes on. Or maybe you don't believe in yourself. And maybe those things just seem like a dream. Those things just seem so far away from you that it's not even possible to even try to achieve them. So your priority right now isn't to go for that huge goal. It's not to go for the huge ambition, but it's actually to get yourself out the hole that you're currently in. Maybe right now you're someone who goes out with their friends and goes to the pub three or four times a week. You're someone who smokes weed. You're someone who smokes cigarettes. You're someone who puffs on flavored air. Maybe you're someone who's got a part-time job that they really couldn't give a shit about and it's not fulfilling to them whatsoever. It's not what they want to do, but you don't really know what you want to do yet. Maybe you're someone with no purpose in your life right now and you don't know what your next move is going to be. And this video is for you. So how is it that you're going to actually get yourself up off the ground right now in order to be on your feet to move towards where you want to be? So in this video, I'm going to go over six habits, six virtues, six things that are keeping you down on the floor. Six things that if you can remove or replace with good things, you will start to move towards your greatest desires and dreams. The first thing that keeps all young men stuck in the mud, and it's probably the biggest thing, is your environment. It's the people you're spending the most time with. The first habit that keeps men stuck to the floor and removes any chances of them going somewhere in their life is the people they spend the most time with. I bet right now you're spending most of your time with a bunch of losers and as arrogant as you may say that is, it's the truth. If, if you're someone who is in a miserable position and you're not really overly happy with your life right now, look at the, most pe look at the people you spend the most time with because I guarantee you they're living exactly the same as you are right now and they're certainly not going anywhere. So you need to first start putting yourself in a position in rooms with people who are going somewhere, people who, if you can get close to them, will drag you up with them, whether they like it or not, because the more, the more time you spend with someone, the more their knowledge, mindset, contacts feed into you. Imagine if instead of spending time with people who were puffing on flavored air and getting pissed at the weekend, you were spending time with people who wouldn't let you spend a day being sluggish. Imagine you spent time with a small group of people who would all hold you accountable to your word. If you say you're gonna do something, these people are gonna make sure you do it and not let you crush that promise you made to yourself like you do with everything else. These people are gonna support you through thick and thin. They're gonna be loyal to you as much as you're gonna be loyal to them. And they're gonna be there for you in the ups and the downs which is the most important part. And imagine if you get yourself in a small inner circle with people who are gonna be competing with you. People who, the positive competition is gonna push all of you to your maximum potentials. This is the type of people you wanna get around and you're not gonna be spending time with them if you're prioritizing spending time with a bunch of people who are the complete opposite of that. The second bad habit that is gonna keep you in the place you're in right now is believing that the world happens to you and that you do not have any control over getting yourself out of your situation. Right now, you might be someone who more often than not plays the victim than the victor. It doesn't matter how bad a position you're in, you always have some controllable that you can enforce to get yourself out of it. There's always something you can do that's gonna put you in a better position because at the end of the day, you're your worst enemy. And it's so much easier to point the finger outwards than it is to point it inwards. But when you do point it inwards, that's when things start to actually change because you start seeing the truth. Most people's egos are so bricked up, that they have a barrier stopping any form of truth getting through to them because they're just so focused on looking outward at, to, to why their problems are their problems instead of looking inwards to why their problems are their problems. You choose whether you see opportunities or a crisis. You choose whether you see the negatives in a situation or the positives in a situation. And so the first two words that are gonna get you out of a bad situation is my fault. You need to take responsibility. The third trait that will pull men back from reaching their full potential is probably the deepest hitting and the most common. In times of past and times of present, this has 
brought down kings, it's brought down wealthy people, it's brought down men in positions of power, it's brought down empires. And this trait is sexual temptation, falling into your sexual desires and not being able to control your sexual impulses because you want that dopamine. If you can master your sexual temptation and transform this energy into fuel that is going to be energy where you're focusing it not on women but onto your work ahead of you onto your purpose you're going to be so powerful because if you if you have the ability and you master the ability to say no to women while you're focusing on your on your road on the way up you're going to be unstoppable most most men can't say no to women for obvious reasons but that's why they're sort of stuck where they are sometimes you might even fall in love with a girl where you can see a future together but if she's not aligned with your purpose and why you're on this planet you have to let go of them you have to let go of them and the reason why you need to master this temptation is because it is probably the highest form of self-discipline weak men seek to have power over others while wise men, strong men seek to have power over themselves and this is probably the biggest of the virtues that you need to master is being able to control your sexual temptation because if you want to conquer the world you must first conquer yourself and this is probably the hardest thing to do as a young man the fourth trait is not being able to harness your pains insecurities and fears but letting them consume you anchoring you further into the depths of average the important thing here is to understand that you need to use everything you have right now which at the start of anything is usually negative things as fuel because what else are you going to do with them if you've got insecurities in terms of you're just dead tired of being broke with no money you've got insecurities because people don't believe in you and you want to prove them wrong people say things and comments all the time when you talk about your dreams and you want to do it for yourself you're tired and sick of being unhealthy fat skinny ill-disciplined and you've got to use these things as fuel it's so difficult in the start to begin and so you need to have as much fuel to your fire as possible in order to get you off the ground in the first place and so the negative things are more powerful in terms of fuel once you learn that every bad thing every hardship every dark essence like pain difficulty heartbreak hate crisis fear can be turned and used and flipped on its head you can transform these into extremely powerful fuel that will get you to where you want to be because you already have everything you need right now within you and in your current situation to grow and succeed so look within you and look at your current situation and seek the fuel sources that are more potent and more powerful than just material desires the fifth thing that keeps most men weak is their ego at the start of anything when you're wanting to make your way up the ladder and get yourself into a position of status that's usually fueled by the ego and I find that a lot of people who are wanting to go somewhere they do more talking than they do doing they tell other people what they're gonna do they tell other people their plan they tell other people everything they're doing in that day and in doing so in doing that talking it makes your brain feel like you've done more work than you actually have and so what you need to do is absolutely stamp on your own ego if somebody's given you constructive criticism because they want the best for you don't get defensive about it take it in and absorb it because they're probably telling you something you need to hear not what you want to hear your ego is the thing that puts up these barriers to things that can help you and it's also the thing that more often than not leads to your downfall instead of your rise. If you do have an ego, which everyone does, you need to use it effectively. You need to take pride in yourself in order to start, in order to want to get to a better place, want to become better. But at the same time, you also have to kick your ego in the teeth at times. Most people, especially in business, they want to start their own business straight away and expect to get to a million a year within two or three years and that's just not going to happen for 99% of people who are, who are trying to achieve that. The ones who are successful are the ones who take the kick in the teeth, take the loss in status temporarily at the start 
that the people who get in positions or roles or jobs where they're learning from everyone around them, they're into an, they're in an organisation that's doing really well and being really successful and they seek mentorship from the people inside there and they learn. And that's the biggest thing you can do. When you have an ego, you need to humble it by being a student. Because when you're a student to life, when you're a student to people who are levels ahead of you in business, people who are levels ahead of you in your career, you don't really, you, your, your ego evaporates when you're a student because you're just constantly learning and you understand that the people you're learning from are way ahead of you. And so your ego can't really flare up. And that's the best way, just become a student and you'll never know it all. I had a conversation with someone the other day and they were saying how even when you're making a million pounds a month as an entrepreneur, you are tiny compared to the amount of wealth that's out there and tiny compared to the amount of people who are making so much more than that, it's unbelievable. And so that's a good way of zooming out your perspective and humbling your ego. The sixth virtue of weakness is the inability to control the monster within you. I think on the way up, especially when you're a young man, you've got to unleash this monster who is ruthless, ambitious, and hungry and extremely aggressive towards your goals. You've got to be very selfish when it comes to you are just locking in on what you're working on and nothing else. But you need to unleash that and then start to learn how to control it very quickly. Because if you can do this, you're going to be very dangerous. A man who is capable of being very dangerous but has complete control over himself is true strength. A man who has never been capable of being dangerous but has no control over himself is dangerous and is weak. I've heard the saying from Jordan Peterson. It's very helpful for people to hear that they should make themselves competent and dangerous and take their proper place in the world. Competent and dangerous? Mm -hmm. Why dangerous? Because it's the alternative to being weak. And weak is not good. The people who shoot up the high schools, they're weak. They're weak. How is it good to be dangerous? Because it makes you formidable. And life is a very difficult process. It's not for, you're not prepared for it unless you have the capacity to be dangerous. That doesn't mean that you should be cruel. It doesn't mean any of that. Those who have swords and know how to use them but keep them sheathed will inherit the world. You have to be powerful and formidable and then peaceful in that order.